Number 9. I almost forgot I had this miniseries for a little bit there. Anyway, you guys, you shot your shot, you took your guess. I told you it was a sweet little anime boy, but which one? Suzuku? <laughs> Bitch, I got three episodes into that show. Sir Isaac Newton? Pretty close, actually. No, this goes to Shinji Akari from the series Neon Gen and Bibi Bambelian. The most infuriating, perplexing, and oddly rewarding anime I've ever seen. There may be no character I know more intimately than Shinji Ikari, against my will, because the whole show is a therapy session for this poor young boy. Evangelion may be a series about the religious end of days and giant robots fighting other giant robots, but like a giant fighting robot, this series of a heart of it has a scared little anime twink. And all of his insecurities, relationships, and weaknesses are thrust upon you. Get ready to enter the psychology and depression of one Shinji Ikari. Honestly, what does this kid not have wrong with him? Worthlessness, crippling depression, massively introverted, daddy and mummy issues. Uh, that's what takes up the majority of the runtime in this mech show, whilst the Christian end of days unfolds in the background. Now, Shinji has been often described by the anime forum community, fucking wise sages they are, as pussy, or a whiny, or get in the robot Shinji. He's not exactly shonen hero favourites. <coughs> yes, hello, can, can someone, someone come pick up, up their son, son from aisle 4? Because for once, the 14 year old schoolboy, tasked with piloting the mech, isn't glamorized. He reacts to a tortured childhood, manipulation, the apocalypse, and constant Lovecraftian horrors in the same way actual people would. Here's the thing with Ava. It's an art house anime pastiching the Saturday morning cartoon that just somehow fell into the Japanese mainstream. Without that key context, it's easy just to see Evangelion as the mech anime it's wearing as a disguise. Evangelion isn't focusing on mechs or on war. Those elements are just about as ornamental as the show's many religious illusions. It is much more focused on the psychology of three broken children. Shinji is a pussy is the quickest way to tell others that you didn't actually follow the first thing about the show. My god, I do not miss early internet forums. Every single time Shinji runs away from the action, you go with him. You leave the battlefield the plot and the stakes behind momentarily. And it's in these moments you see the true priority of the show, Shinji's psychological state. Imagine if Bleach Man from Bleach lost a big sword battle and then had an existential crisis he needed actual therapy for. Imagine if Naruto got a bit psychosexual with his ghost dad. I'm sorry Futsunari Gundam 2007. It's okay for media to challenge you sometimes. To be fair, Evangelion can be a challenging watch, but I love that this is a character who shirks his action hero responsibilities because he doesn't want to and he's scared. When it's those same insecurities that lead him to getting into the action in the first place. Acceptance, a sense of self, a purpose. 26 episodes and Shinji is still searching for his motivation. Why am I doing what I'm doing? I love that in the protagonist. Question the systems that control you. Ultimately it turns out Shinji just wants to return to the amniotic fluid of his literal flesh mother, meaning that all Shinji really wants is to crawl back up into the womb, can relate. But at the same time it's still a stretch of the imagination to call Shinji a pussy. I hate that. Worst criticism. Shinji isn't even remotely a coward. Shinji is you. And at the wrong age, anime fans don't want to see themselves accurately reflected in a genre of power fantasies. Shinji is brave. He's selfless and heroic. Getting into the fleshy abomination of mum, an experience that by the way, hurts him, Let's snap your arm and throw a metal pole through your skull and see how you cope with your loveless military world of emotional manipulation and god horrors. <sighs> In fact, catch him still stepping up to save a kid he doesn't even like with nothing but a shank. 
Here's the thing. You shouldn't want Shinji to get in the robot. Give my son a fraction of love and belonging. Someone get this boy a hug. Honestly, I think he just set up for someone saying good job to him without the lure of sexual or emotional manipulation. Oh, that is a good question. Visual prompt. What is this character's greatest moment? Well, there's that time you made a whole new dimension, <laughs> giving me a splitting continuity headache. I personally love it every single time we're in Shinji's head and he's just understanding things and breaking them down as concepts. He's an abstract little boy. But my favourite moment is absolutely everything involving Karu. Kaoru? Oh god damn it, they're gonna come for me again. I didn't pronounce the anime name right! All the way into episode 24, Shinji finally meets the one person who truly loves him. Unconditionally. And it doesn't go great. Earlier this year, Evangelion dropped on Netflix with a brand new English dub, and it changed dialogue. Not only did this unqueer Shinji, but it also damaged core moments of the show, which I think is the entire appeal of Evangelion. Now, instead of the brutal honesty of this, I'm so fucked up. Shinji is now masturbating over his unconscious friend in a hospital ward and says some flowery anime bullshit like, I'm the lowest of the low. Ugh. Evangelion was such a visceral series, and Netflix just approached it like a more lyrical modern anime. And to me, that's not Shinji. Now, the one healthy relationship in the program is just a like you rather than a love you. And every frank, honest character beat in a show about character exploration feels like it's been sedated, censored, defaced. I'm reading through some more of these forum posts just because I'm a glum for punishment, and one of them says that Shinji never grows, never mans up, never gets over it. Oh my god. Shinji not only grows, he heals. Shinji comes so far in very real world terms that it frankly makes other characters in other series look bad. Anyway, in the next few entries you may start seeing a recurring pattern. I love tortured characters who just get put through the goddamn pits. There's a couple on this list I'm actually neglecting who I love for the exact same reasons. Just pushing one person to breaking point. It's sadistic, and why I should never be an author with my own characters. But when you get to the very ending of this show, and you don't even know how to feel about the finale, when you've just spent the last hour inside this kid's brain, my god, you have to understand him. And the fact that this bit of depression art is in the world with me gives me hope, I think. It's a lot, but it's an intense character study. I wish more media had the liberty to introspect this deeply. An 8 minute video is not going to scratch the surface of Shinji Ikari and many other better YouTubers do. But considering I didn't even like him much on my first viewing of the program, he now stands as one of my favourite fictional characters. It's a character and a series that just become more and more a part of your life the more thought you give them. There's always more to think about, and it seems like you can always go deeper. At this point it's hard not to understand Shinji Ikari as a character because the show itself is his therapy session. A uh, therapy session that ends the world. Twice. And thank you. It all comes tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. This video was originally going to have jokes in it. My non-biological brother, me and Harry just shot the shit. It was great. But now just another video lost to the ages. Next, uh, week, hmm, uh, <laughs> someone a bit, uh, different. 